Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him, for the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our God, for he is our maker. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today, harden not your heart. Jesus, no, not one, no, not one.
you all to stand and sing this chorus with us. now as we read scripture from the book of Exodus 16th chapter verses 2 through 15. Exodus 16th chapter verses 2 through 15. And if you would like to stand in honor of God's word, feel free to do so. Exodus 16 starting at the second chapter, I mean second verse, second verse. The word of God says, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted, but you have brought us out into the desert, this desert, to starve this entire assembly to death. Mm. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. And this way I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that we should grumble against who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against God. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. As you take your seats, prepare your heart as God speaks to us from this text.
Good morning, church. Let us pray. Rabbi, Rabbi, the one that sits high and looks low. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning for just to lift you up, dear Lord, for your love for us, dear Lord, and what you stand for, Father. You made us from dust. Free, dear Lord, you sent your son to die for us, dear Lord, and we thank you for your love for us for that, dear Lord. We come to you, dear Lord, asking for forgiveness, forgiveness of our sins. Father, we come to you just lifting up this church, dear Heavenly Father, all the ministers that's on the pulpit, dear Lord, the officers who's been elected, dear Lord, let us be about your business, my Father, and your business only. Dear Lord, we just thank you for just being gracious to us, even though we don't deserve it, dear Lord. Father, I ask you to be with the ones who's sick. You know who they are. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that you are healing. You will provide for them. Be with their families, dear Lord. Let us not forget them, dear Lord, who's there to help them along, dear Lord. Father, be with this dying world, dear Lord. People just taking upon themselves to just kill, shoot, dear Heavenly Father, people like it's nothing, dear Heavenly Father. Oh, Father, touch their hearts, dear Lord. Turn their minds around, dear Lord. Dear Lord, be with those who may be struggling in the mind, dear Lord, who may be depressed or what have you, dear Lord. Let them come to know you, my Father. I know you are provided, dear Lord. Dear Lord, I ask you to be with the candidates who's coming today, dear Lord, who heard your calling to be baptized, dear Lord. Oh, Father, you're so good, dear Lord. You're still on the throne, saving lives. Oh, dear Lord, I just thank you for our jobs, dear Lord. Be with those who may be having financial difficulties, dear Lord. Let them keep looking up to the hill where their strength comes from. You will provide. I believe that, dear Lord. I've seen too much of things that you have done for people, dear Lord. Those, like I say, that's been sick, you healed them. They was able to come back to church. Dear Lord, those who not able to get out of their bed, you was able to do that, dear Lord. Oh, Father, you're so good to us. Be with our pastor, Reverend Tucker, dear Lord. Thank you for him, his daughter, dear Lord. Dear Lord, just thank you for, again, everyone who participated in your body of work, dear Lord. We love you. Just thank you again for everything you do. In your son name, Jesus Christ, I do pray. Jesus name. Amen.
church family, friends, and visitors. We welcome you to our baptism worship service this morning, and we thank God for our young people that have chosen to give their lives to Christ. We also thank God for our preacher for the morning, the Reverend Donald Robinson. Please be sure to continue to pray for our sick and shut-in and our bereaved families. Persons who have paid for their pastor's appreciation and birthday gala tickets in full may pick up their tickets at the conclusion of today's worship service. Please note that members of the commemoration committee are available after every service to receive your payments. If your purchase package is incomplete, you are urged to contact the planning committee immediately. Also note that the event is formal. There's still room on our 46 Years of Honor page. Payment of $46 must be made in full. And remember, the deadline for purchasing gala tickets is February 12th. Additionally, if you would like to send a video greeting to the pastor, to um, the former pastor, you may use the free platform provided. Text or send video recording link to 202. 524-0749, or call and leave a message. For additional information or questions, you may contact Sister Dana Anderson. First Baptist Church's virtual health ministry will host a COVID-19 vaccination, health insurance, and blood pressure screening event on Wednesday, January 26th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. here at First Baptist Church. All persons are invited to attend this event. To register, please call 202-765-2513, and walk-ins are also welcome. First Baptist Church is sponsoring a youth and young adult reunion bowling event, February 19th at 4 p.m. at the Bolero Bowling Center in College Park, Maryland. The event is for current and former youth and young adult members of First Baptist Church that are currently under the age of 45. We, <laughs> we are encouraging all of our current and former youth and young adults to come out for what will be an entertaining event and, and fun time to reunite together while having fun. To register for the event, please email fbcyouthministry712 at gmail.com. Our sympathy and condolence to Brother Alfred Wilson and family in the transitioning of his mother and our beloved member, Sister Gloria Wilson. The service will be at First Baptist Church on January 25th. The viewing will be at 10 a.m. and service at 11 a.m. And we say a special congratulations to Deacon Kenneth and Ms. Jenna Brooks, who recently celebrated their 27th wedding anniversary on January 16th. <laughs> May God continue to bless you both with many more years to come. And God bless each of you, and we look forward to worshiping with you on next Sunday. Anybody here love Jesus? Simple song says, I really love you because you first loved me.
I really love you. I really love you. I really love you. Because you first love me. I really love you. Yes, I do. How can you love me? How can you love me? Knowing all the things.
Good morning, Fresh Baptist. We certainly thank God for this day and we thank God for this opportunity to once again proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. But I wish you would uh, stand on your feet and put your hands together as we thank God for these uh, three angels. Amen. Amen. I guess it's really five angels. You've, you've got Stephanie and Jeanette and 
you've got David and you've got Mike and you've got Rick. Amen. Amen. And so we thank God for them leading us into a season of worship and praise. We thank God for it. And certainly we thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, in his absence, we thank God for uh, uh, Pastor Emeritus, the Reverend Dr. Frank D. Tucker. We pray God's blessings and peace upon he and his family. And certainly we thank God for our interim pastor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Emmett S. Young III. Amen. Amen. We thank God for him. And we thank God for Reverend Few, Reverend Knight, all of the deacons and deaconesses and trustees and officers and members of this branch of Zion called First Baptist Church, originally from Southwest. Amen. Um, today I would that you would turn your attention to the Old Testament, amen. We, we, we don't read the Old Testament much these days, amen. I guess some people say it's old, amen, <laughs> amen. But it's still refreshing and it's still blessing. The, the hymn writer said, the Lord is blessing me right now, Lord, right now. And I believe if you could find the 16th chapter of Exodus, uh, verses 3 and beyond, um, 2 and beyond, uh, I pray that the Lord will bless us, especially if we pray right. Let us pause and ask the Lord's blessings and guidance. Lord, thank you so much for the blessing of life, the blessing of health, the blessing of family and friends. Thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sin. Thank you for salvation and redemption. Thank you, Lord, for being a very present help in our many times of trouble. Lord, we are thankful. We are grateful because we know we don't deserve these many, many, many blessings. But Lord, we receive them and we thank you and we say amen, Lord. So Lord, while we're here worshiping and praising God and gathered together in this place, those of us who are in person, those of us who are on the various platforms, we ask blessings upon each of us. We ask, Lord, that you would guide our minds, our hearts, our spirits. And, Lord, we ask you to remove anything that would hinder and block and stop us from being open, yielded vessels. Open and yielded to your will, your way, and your divine word. Lord, we ask that you would place an unusual amount of receptivity in our minds and spirits. We ask, Lord, that you would touch someone today, that they might declare and affirm, what must I do to be saved? And Lord, take me your preaching servant. Touch me 
Consecrate me. Anoint me afresh. Speak to me and speak through me. That you might be glorified even this day. In that matchless name that is above all other names, even the Christ, we pray. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus chapter 16, beginning at verse 2 to verse 15. In the, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died in the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all of the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough bread for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but you are grumbling against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, say to the entire Israelite community, come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, They looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. And I want to talk for a few moments from the subject. The God who prepares a table of blessing even in the wilderness. The God who prepares a table of blessing even 
in the wilderness. I'm reminded of a father who was on his way to another state to attend a meeting and he had his daughter with him and his flight was delayed and he needed to find some constructive things for her to do to engage her mind. And um, he found a photograph of a world map. And he decided that he would make a project out of this map. And so he tore it neatly into about 16 pieces and he mixed them together on the table and he said to his daughter, I want you to put the world back together again. And I know this is difficult for you, but take about 30 or 40 minutes. His daughter agreed. She said, okay. Well, about 10 or 12 minutes later, the daughter came to her father and said, daddy, 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 I solved it. I put the puzzle back together. And the father was astonished. He was amazed. He didn't know if he was in the presence of genius or not. He said to his daughter, he said, how did you do that? How did you solve this puzzle in such a short period of time? And she said, Dad, it was really easy. She said, I prayed, and I asked God to give me the patience to think and study this these pieces, and I also remembered that on the other side of the map of the world was a picture of Jesus. And she said, I came to the realization, if I can get Jesus right, everything else will fall in place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This story reminds us that sometimes when we deal with the challenges and difficulties of the world, when we have problems that we're trying to solve, it's, it's to our advantage to pray and to ask God for patience and wisdom and guidance. And usually when we do that, he blesses us and things tend to fall back in place. In our Exodus reading, quite the opposite is taking place. The Bible says the people of God are disenchanted, they are discouraged, they are dissatisfied, and they are whining, whimpering, and complaining to their wonderful leaders, Moses and Aaron. They're really mad at God, but they're taking it out on Moses and Aaron. These are the same people who recently were delivered, rescued, and saved from years of Egyptian bondage, torture, imprisonment, and slavery. And the text says that they got so disenchanted, they got so discouraged that they said, we want to go back to Egypt. They said at least we had all kinds of food and we had big old pots of meat. We want to go back. And my friends, I would dare say that sometimes, even in the body of Christ, we feel the same way. We might not tell anybody, but we pray, we wait on God, we trust in God, 
We want him to answer like he's a butler. And he doesn't in a timely fashion because we forgot he doesn't have to do anything by close of business Friday. So, so we, we whimper, whine, and complain. And certainly in the last three years, the whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, upside down. We, we've seen death and destruction and sickness in an unprecedented way. To say nothing about the unemployment, underemployment, and violence and political chicanery on the local and national level. And so if we're honest, if we're transparent, I would dare say a whole bunch of us did a whole bunch of whimpering, whining, and complaining. And might have wanted to go back metaphorically to Egypt. The reality is that these people had just been delivered out of Egyptian bondage. They were in the Sinai Desert on their way to the promised land, the land of milk and honey, the land of their enemies, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Girgashites, all those people. That's where they were headed. And, and, and from the wilderness coming out of Egypt to Canaan land was a trip that would take about 30, 40 days. So they had limited provisions. But a trip that should have taken 30 or 40 days wind up being 40 years. I believe that the wilderness experience became a training ground, a preparation ground, a place where the people of God could be detoxified. In other words, they, they, they had the culture of Egypt still in their blood. They were saying we are the people of God, but they were living and thinking and acting like Egyptians. And God had a plan and a purpose for his people because he was going to make them the shining example of what it means to be the people of God. So it took 40 years to work all that stuff out of them. Because God told them, when you get into Canaan land, <coughs> when you get in the midst of these enemies, you've got to get rid of all these people. You can't fellowship with them. You can't worship with them. You can't marry with them. You can't have relationship with them. They are enemies against the will and way of God. And they will distract you, discourage you, and mislead you and send you to hell. But people do what they do. Because they want what they want. When they want it. And I guess they say, well I hear what God is saying, but look over there. Look over there. Why we gotta wait till next year to get blessed? I see a blessing right in front of me. Hallelujah. And I think I'm going to get that blessing now. And, and, and so God had to work all of this stuff out of his people. Because he has a plan and purpose for their lives. And I believe as we find ourselves in this new year, even as we find ourselves in transition in the body of Christ at First Baptist. 
I believe God wants to do some new stuff, some new things in us. But the people of God focus on Moses and Aaron. And their focus should have been on themselves. And, and, and so we shouldn't be focusing on a person that's going to come here and fix everything. God is saying to us, you're in transition. You're in a holding pattern. You're in the wilderness. Because you need to be reset. <clears throat> recalibrated. Reformed. Restored and transformed. That you can walk in the newness of life. In other words, it's like, <clears throat> it's like somebody says to God in their prayer, Lord, send me a nice husband. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> or, Lord, send me a wonderful, beautiful, intelligent wife. And I thank God my wife, Karima, is here with me tonight. Amen. Today. Amen. 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 God bless her. But, 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 now, but now, our intentions are that God would travel across town, across the country, and find somebody who meets all of our characteristics and our suggested menu of things we like. So tall, so short, so wise, so intelligent, so charming, so dashing, so handsome, so beautiful. And so we want God to go way over there, way over there, and fix this person and get them ready. But God is saying, while I'm across town fixing, transforming, getting them ready, I need you to get ready. I need you to be under construction, under renewal. I need you to be pleading the blood of Jesus, to be reading the word, fasting and praying, and spiritually being transformed. So when I bring that person to you, and you to them, you've got two people walking in the newness of life. It's not going to work if the new person comes to you and you're the same old, same old. That's not going to work. And, and that's how the people of God were. They want God to fix all of that stuff. And we want God to fix us and fix the church. But we're not willing to grow and mature spiritually. In other words, First Baptist, we need to open up our Bibles at home. And we need to read and study. So when you come to the church, You've got word already in you. You've got praise already in you. In fact, you come in the front door talking about soon and very soon I'm going to see the king. You come in the door saying hallelujah, thank you Jesus. You don't have to wait to the choir to pump you up to get you ready, to get you started. When you woke up this morning and you realize I've got another day, <clears throat> them healthy, sane, sober, and clothed in my right mind, you ought to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this new day. <clears throat> I haven't had my breakfast yet. Haven't had my medicine yet. Haven't taken a shower yet. 
But I've got so much already to be thankful for. And Lord, if you never do another thing, you've already done more than enough. So my brothers and sisters, As we read this text and as we try to learn and grow from this, from the experiences of the people of God who were in this wilderness, wilderness experience, there's so many parallels and correlations between them and us. And I believe if we walk through this text, we can find reasons to rejoice and reasons to find peace and contentment and ways to improve and better ourselves. And so the first thing we come to realize is that God wants us to learn to celebrate and appreciate the daily blessings and miracles that he renders to us. Appreciate and celebrate the daily blessings and miracles that he renders to us. In other words, God said to Moses, tell the people, I'm going to give them sweet dew or manna in the morning for breakfast. And in the evening, I'm going to give them an abundance of quail. So they don't have to complain that Moses, you brought them to the wilderness to die, to starve. I'm going to provide for you. Now, here's the twist. What God is really doing, he's preparing his people to daily look to him for his blessings and provisions. <clears throat> In other words, if you're thirsty, if you're hungry, God says, I will provide manna in the morning. And quail at night. And when it's dark outside, I'll let you have some light through the fire in the clouds. In other words, God is, despite the fact that the people of God have been whimpering, whining, and complaining, have been obstinate and contrary, God is still blessing them. Still being compassionate. And he wants them to know that he will never leave them nor forsake them despite what they say or do. That's how good God is. And, 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 so, and so God is pre preparing this manna, this do. Now, this is a miracle. It's a miracle because you don't find do in dry, hot, barren places. Dew is found in green, grassy, moist places. But you serve a God who prepares a table of blessing even in the wilderness, even in the desert. But yet the people whimpered, whined, and complained. So the lesson in this is appreciate, celebrate the daily blessings and the miracles that God is granting to you. In other words, don't take God's blessings, his miracles, and his favor for granted. In other words, today, right now, God is blessing us, protecting us. <clears throat> and providing for us. Let us not take this for granted. 
A lot of people died in COVID, <clears throat> but yet we're still here. Let us not take that for granted. A lot of people are still sick, but we're here. Let us celebrate and appreciate the blessings and miracles that the Lord is providing daily. That's why the hymn writer said, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness unto thee. My brothers and sisters, we have received even this day, not day old mercies, not last week mercies, not stale mercies, but brand new fresh mercies today. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Now secondly, secondly, don't go back and don't be delusional. The text says the people of God became so disenchanted, so discouraged that they wanted to go back. Imagine that. You are so distracted and so discouraged and so delusional, you want to go back to slavery. Back to imprisonment. Back to torture. Back to starvation. Why? Because you are delusional. Behavioral psychologists tell us that a person who is delusional has what you call parallel realities. They have two realities side by side. In other words, they've got the real reality right here. And they've got what they want it to be right here. And so a person that's delusional can manufacture a whole nother world in their head that exists nowhere else but in their head. And you have to be delusional to come straight out of slavery <clears throat> on your way to the promised land but yet you want to go back to Egypt. But, but let us not point our bony fingers at the people of God. Because some of us are the same way. We might not say it, but we think it. We feel it. Sometimes we get discouraged, delusional distracted, and we want to go back. Back to the club. Back to the bar. Back to the strippers. Huh? Back to cussing and fussing. Back to jealousy, envy, being mean-spirited, being ugly, being nasty. Being selfish. We want to go back because it's familiar. We've done it so long. But that's a delusion. It's only in your mind. It's not real. But my brothers and sisters, the enemy, the adversary, the devil... In bad times, in desperation, in troubled times, he can delude us and, dis and, and tempt us and distract us into thinking that the grass over in Egypt is better than where we are now. So whatever you do, my brothers and sisters, don't go back. And don't be delusional. But, but if your mind just takes you back, 
Go back and remember the pain, the suffering, the agony that you were in when God delivered you, when he saved you, when he brought you out. Remember how humiliated you were. <clears throat> Remember the uncharacteristic things you used to say and do that you are ashamed to even repeat today. Before the Lord delivered you, rescued you, brought you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Oh, go back. But don't just remember the fun you had, which was temporary. Don't just remember the good times you had, but remember how you prayed and begged and pleaded and said, Lord, Lord, have mercy on my poor, wretched soul. And God came and got you. Don't go back. Don't be discouraged. And don't be delusional. But finally, and most importantly, don't undervalue the cost of freedom. Don't undervalue the cost of freedom. The people of God took freedom for granted. They act as if they hadn't been praying 400 years. They acted as if they hadn't been pleading with God. They act, acted as if they had not been tortured and enslaved and imprisoned and been harshly treated. For long periods of time, they forgot all of that. They just threw it away. They said, we want to go back. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, desperation and trouble can make us undervalue the cost of our freedom. Even though we don't live in a perfect world. And we don't live in a perfect country. Where we are today is better than where we were 100 years ago. Some of us are so foolish and disenchanted we don't even respect the power of voting. We don't register. We don't go to meetings. And we don't vote. But how can you know the history of your people who suffered, bled, and died and went to jail for you, for me, for us? How can you undervalue all of that suffering, all of that sacrifice? My brothers and sisters, somebody always prays a price for the freedom that we have. As I close, I want to remind us that we have the gift of salvation. And that salvation gift has been freely given to us. But it cost God our Father his son. God had to watch his son be tortured, beaten, Treated like a criminal. Sacrifice and suffer. And die on an old rugged cross. He had to watch it. But that was the only way. That we could get right with God. And deal with our sin problem. There had to be a spotless, blameless Lamb of God that was offered up in our place. 
That's why the hymn writer said Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he has washed us whiter than snow. Yes, my brothers and sisters, salvation is a free grace gift that we have received, but it did cost God the Father and God the Son something. Let us not undervalue or marginalize the price somebody paid that we could be free. And so in the coming days, as we journey forth into this new year, despite the trouble, the trials, the tribulations, the stuff going on at the White House, the stuff going on at Mar-a-Lago, stuff going on in Capitol Hill, remember that we serve a great God, an awesome God, that sits high yet looks low, and he still has the whole world in his hands. And that is a God who still provides a table of plenty even in the wilderness, even in the desert, even in dry, hot, arid places. God can make a way somehow. There might be someone here today who throughout last year and some of this year maybe you whimpered maybe you whined maybe you complained maybe you thought the Lord didn't hear your prayer and you wanted to give up and give in maybe you stopped coming to church maybe you stopped praying maybe you never prayed but I want to say to you today that God loves you. And just like the people of God in the time of Moses, even though they whimpered, whined, and complained, God provided for them every day. God blessed them and forgave them. And that same God wants to bless you. He wants to provide for you. He wants to offer you the gift of salvation that you might have a right relationship with God, that you might have redemption and healing and transformation and eternal life. I extend the invitation to you and open the doors of the church that you might experience afresh this day a great God, an awesome God, the God who prepares a table of blessing even in the wilderness is there one that would come and accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior is there one that would come is there one that would come I don't know about you my friends but I'm grateful that God looks past my faults and sees my needs and still blesses me despite me. And he'll do the same for you. Is there one, as we stand throughout the church, is there one that would come? Don't let this moment pass you by. He will lead you and he will guide you. And he offers you a personal relationship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Is there one that would come? Lead me, guide me. Oh Lord, lead me. Let us sing together. God.
Each day, each day, each day. Each day with me. Lead me, oh Lord, lead me. Let's give God some praise. Amen. 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 We want to um, also continue in worship as we worship through our giving. And we want to encourage you to be generous in your giving, even as God is generous to us and uh, persons who are present with us. Uh, know that you can get your tithes and offerings ready and you can give it to the ushers as you uh, depart. And to those who are with us virtually or on the various platforms, uh, information is being um, put up on the platform now uh, as to how you can give, how you can give electronically, how you can um, send it in the mail, as well as how you can bring it to this address, uh, 712 Randolph Street, Northwest, at the corner of Randolph and New Hampshire. You can send it there, or you can uh, just put it in the, in, the, in the mail, or you can um, PayPal it, you can electronically send it. All that information is on the platform, and so whatever process is best for you, uh, you can avail yourself of each of those. Amen? Yes. Uh, we thank God for this day. We thank God for our time together. And I think that we are about ready for the baptismal experience. We're not quite ready, so maybe we ought to sing one more song. And uh, I would just say this, if God has blessed you, if he has healed you, if he has redeemed you and rescued, rescued you out of some difficult situations, you ought to sing with great joy, great gladness, great fervor, and great gratitude. Don't sit down on God, but stand up and let the world know that God is good. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I guess the Lord is blessing me right now. Lord, right now. Get your hands together. Stand up on your feet. Sing. The Lord is blessing me. Woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. The Lord is blessing me right now, right now, right now.
you but he is blessing me right now I am thankful and grateful for the great things the Lord is doing hallelujah hallelujah David I guess we need one more or two more of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded, and lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the earth. This, what we do today, is an awesome moment in the body of Christ to welcome in somebody else who has decided to give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is why what we do as they come into the water, they go down into what we call the liquid stream and come back up again. It is a belief in the death, burial, and resurrection by Lord Jesus Christ. Going down one way, coming back up another. Change. And that's what baptism is. Let me let you all know something. Uh, the water is, is really just regular D.C. tap water. All right. There's nothing mystical or magical in the water itself. But what we believe is that when they go down in this water, that it's a change. There's an, it's an outward change, excuse me, an outward uh, a sign of an inward change. And so when she goes down, she's coming back up in that newness of life. The Bible tells us in Romans 6, Know ye not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that life is Christ, raised from the was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. She's got a new walk, y'all, a new talk. And we are grateful and glad to be able to witness the service of baptism. So I'm now going to ask Sister Bass if she would come to the altar and kneel. We're also going to ask her family members who are here today, if they want to stand, please come on up and surround her with love. Thank God for our deacons and deaconess who want to be surrounding her with love. And you all are members to also, as she comes, show her some love for her. She has come to give her life to the Lord and with the service of baptism. Yes, 
Lord God, unfortunately, seems to be unnatural in this day and age. It seems like things have slowed down. But God, we rejoice today because, Lord, people are still being saved, still being baptized. And we come right now thanking you, giving you all the glory, honor, and praise for this young sister who has said, I want to be baptized. I believe in Jesus. And I'm now walking in the newness of life. Consecrate her afresh, God. Consecrate us all afresh as we come before your holy presence with this service, knowing, God, that this is something you've commanded. And as you have, we're going to do what you've commanded and be grateful about the one who has come, knowing, God, that there will even be others that see this today and also say, you know what, I want to be baptized too because I believe in Jesus Christ and what he's done. So we thank you for your blessing. We thank you for your love. We thank you for being able to rejoice over today what we do in this service of baptism. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
fellowship that we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. Rest, will and abide on us now, henceforth, and forevermore. If you love the Lord, somebody say amen, amen, and amen. Go in peace and have a wonderful week.